Now, the thing with instruments is that there's a way that they're supposed to be played. If you have a drum set, you hit it. And with guitar, you hold a note and you strum. But somewhere along the way, people came up with this thing called extended technique, which is where you use an instrument the wrong way, but on purpose. But it's actually become so common that you've probably heard a lot of extended technique and not even thought of it as that weird. And some of the techniques, pretty wacky. So today, I wanted to make a tier list where we look at a bunch of different extended techniques for guitar and we rank them and say, are they good? Maybe. So our first extended technique that we're gonna look at is bowed guitar. So typically, the way you play guitar is either with your little fingies or you can buy a guitar pick and pluck. You've seen guitar. So bowed guitar is where instead of using those things, you get a bow, like from a violin, and you use that to play your strings. And that would sound like this. <laughs> freaking cool. So yeah, bowed guitar is actually a really good way to emulate other instruments. There's some pretty viral videos out there where a guy makes his guitar sound like a cello and like a violin, and he just does that with a pen, so you don't even need to actually buy a bow. You can just use a pen. It does kind of damage your strings, but what does it? I think if you kind of want an orchestral sound in your music and you own a guitar and you know how to fret, it's decent. A tier. Percussion sticks. So this is kind of like the last one, but instead of using a bow to elegantly slide across your strings, you go whack 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 with some drumsticks. And this is what it sounds like. It sounds pretty cool, but it is a really unique sound that you can't get any other way. I'll give it a B. Cross strings or snare drum technique, which is basically where you cross two strings and then you pluck them and it's supposed to sound like a snare drum, like this. Now what I'll say, it does sound like a snare drum, but a very broken snare drum. Hear that? This snare sounds like garbage. That said, the fact that an acoustic guitar can make a sound like that, it's not bad. I'm pretty sure you're gonna break your strings if you do this like more than once. So I'd say it's pretty high risk and mediocre reward. We'll give it a C for cool. Now another really similar trick, well actually kind of the same one, but with an electric guitar and different strings is the bell trick. You just cross two strings over, probably break them, but you might not. And then you pluck. <laughs> Sounds like a bell. We'll give it a C. String scrapes. So string scrapes are where you scrape your string. And it sounds like this. It's pretty popular in like metal and music that scares me, but it is cool and it's relatively easy to do, at least at a basic level. We'll give it a C tier. Percussive effects. So this is really popular in like flamenco. It's where you use your guitar body as a drum. It's very impressive. But that's the thing. Percussive effects are less of a little trick, like doing a bell sound, and more of a full-on technique. It's pretty cool, and when it's done really well, it's really cool. Um, A tier. Pizzicato. So pizzicato, I don't know if I'm saying that Italian enough, is generally done on bowed instruments, where you ditch the bow and use your fingers to pluck the strings instead. It gives a really nice plucking sound, or if you see it on an upright bass, that's the classic. But basically, to do it on guitar, it's just a form of palm muting, and you try and achieve that same violin plucky sound, but on your guitar. It sounds pretty cool. B tier. Tapping. So tapping is probably the most common extended technique, but in case you don't know, instead of putting a finger down and then strumming to make a note, you just put the finger down pretty hard, and then it'll ring out just from fretting it. Now, a slightly less common, but still pretty common form of tapping is two-hand tapping, which is where you also use your right hand to tap. So instead of strumming, you're using two hands on the fretboard, like this. But it's also pretty common in acoustic music, especially combined with percussive effects, where it looks like this. Awesome. So on its own, I'll say tapping is A tier. But combined with percussive effects, S tier. Prepared guitar. So this is basically where you modify your guitar by either adding something or taking something away to change how it sounds. Now, there are like a million ways that you can change a guitar, so I figured we'd break down some subcategories and rank those. The Johnny Cash card. So in country folklore, they say that back in the day, country artists didn't have percussion sections. So they'd find creative ways to add in a rhythmic effect. And probably the best known one is Johnny Cash, who put in some cash Ha, uh, in between the strings and the fretboard to kind of get a snare effect. And does it work? Sounds okay. The sock. 
You take a sock and you tie it around your neck, kind of like a capo. Is it gross? Depends. Depends. But is it effective? Yeah. Sometimes when you're trying to play a solo or do some like really fast finger work, it's really easy to accidentally ring out other strings than the one you want to ring out. It, it's next to impossible to be able to keep them all muted. And this does a great job to just completely kill that sound and you get a way cleaner sound. I'll say it's a B. Those are all of them for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making it to the end. Bye.